So when I started looking at getting a boat, uh, I went to Craigslist like most people would and eBay and I started looking at boats, lots and lots of boats. And this one is a, a 36 foot sailboat. And I found that the prices varied a lot. Like this is only $5,000 for 36 feet. That's pretty good. You know, this is a pretty roomy boat. But as I looked around more and I learned more about boats, very limited, of course, I kept hearing that there's no such thing as a free boat. And apparently, there's a lot wrong with these boats. There's a reason that they're cheap. Like a 36-foot boat that's fixed up and really nice, that's like 60000 70000 even more that people are selling for uh, on some websites. But then you find these deals and you're like, wow, I'll get, get one of these cheap boats. The problem is, and the reason that I don't really want one, is that there are a lot of hidden costs with it. Everything can be wrong with these boats. Of course, you get them checked out before you get one by a survey. And they, they check the core and see if it's rotted inside and they see if there's blisters and stuff like that. But the survey itself costs a couple thousand dollars. So chances are there's going to be a lot of stuff wrong with your boat. That and the upkeep costs of the boat as stuff goes wrong with it. These boats, you know, they're designed as commercial products and they're cheap fiberglass. The materials, they skip a lot of steps. I've seen things, I, I watch a lot of videos about people fixing their boats and how they don't fiberglass all the wood in or they drill right through the fiberglass in the wood leaving a hole where water can get in and it starts to rot out um, that and you have stuff like through holes there are design issues with these bolt these boats so the toilet they um, they drill holes through the boat and put seacocks where the water is a seacock is basically a valve that you can let water in through or let waste out through or whatever you need to do with a hole in the bottom of your boat. The problem is these leak. A lot can go wrong with these. Uh, the windows, the windows on boats are notorious for leaking, which is another design issue it seems. Also with the fiberglass boat, there's a lack of ability to upgrade it, especially with what I want to do with it, uh, turning it into a trimaran. Uh, there are some people who've done it, but the larger the boat you get, the more issue you have with connecting more fiberglass to the boat structurally. Because really what you're dealing with is just a, a thin shell of fiberglass around the whole thing, and it's not terribly strong. At the bottom of every boat, of these fiberglass boats, at least the larger ones, they have like an egg crate structure, typically, that gives the bottom more support, and then everything's supported to that. And that's where the keel is also. Uh, another issue with these type of boats is insulation. It's a notorious issue. So people, you can buy insulation sheets to go into the side of your boat, glue them in and stuff like that. But really, that's not that great. You know, if, you, if you've looked into housing insulation, an inch of insulation isn't going to do too, too much. It'll help a lot, but it's not going to be crazy. The thing with a steel boat is, like a house, you can just spray in insulation and uh, cover the whole thing, which is a huge advantage on a steel boat, and that's one of the reasons that I'm looking into that. Another advantage of the steel boat, as opposed to getting a cheapo fiberglass boat, is, like I said before, safety. The thing is just steel, so if it runs aground, it's not going to rip a hole in your boat. Like, here's a fiberglass boat where they run into anything run into uh, too shallow, hit your, run to rocks. With the steel boat, you have a lot more leeway in that area. Especially with what I'm thinking of doing the half inch, 
three quarters of an inch of steel, that thing just won't break. What, what are you going to do to it? Nothing. And if, if you want to go to the North Ocean, where it's a lot rougher, right? So the sea can be cruel, apparently. You want something that you should feel safe in, that can take a beating, that can be pounded by waves in a fiberglass boat, especially if it has issues and it's not completely perfect. Um, it's not going to survive. You're just going to you're going to die, which would probably not be what I want. Uh, steel boats also longer longevity, right? Old boats old fiberglass boats, the notorious for all the problems that are on. The thing with fiberglass boats is they're not really that old. So they started making what in the 60s, 70s when fiberglass came along and it was a cheap alternative, plentiful, so they made a lot of boats that way and a lot of the boats look the same because of that. A few manufacturers just started pumping out these commercial goods. And, you know, going to have a boat, why put all that effort into something that you're making or that you're living on if it's not going to last or it's going to keep having problems and it's going to be a money sink. That's another thing people apparently in the community say about boats is it's just a, a hole to put your money in that's floating around. It's, so reducing those costs as much as possible seems like a good idea, especially if you're starting out from the beginning. Why why get one of these cheap $5,000 boats that you have to sand the outside, you have to do everything with? Like, yeah. like maybe this just needs a coat of paint? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe it's all rotted inside and this thing, if you take it out to sea, it'll just get destroyed and it'll, maybe it leaks through every hole that it has. The cushions themselves, you know, five thousand dollars for new cushions. And if you're buying new cushions, why not just buy new cushions for a new boat? And then what else do you got in here? There's a toilet somewhere in here, probably. That's another thing. What type of toilet do you use? Do you do it with a holding tank, or do you do? A lot of boating people are replacing their toilets, so taking out the existing ones and replacing with like compost toilet, which is apparently is a lot less hassle. Seems like a good idea, but if you're going to do that. Why go for a boat like this where you'd have to tear out the entire thing and the holding tank and then put in a new system? Starting with a steel boat, which is cheaper material costs, but it was uh, one in one point seven thousand dollars for the amount of steel just for the hull. Probably probably more for all the like upper deck and everything like that, but you know, maybe two, three thousand dollars. It's not that much. You gotta weld it up, it's not that hard. And then you can design it in a, in a better way, more modern way, I guess. That helps reduce costs in the longer term. That and what is just a shell that you live in. It's got benches, it's got a bed, toilet, you know, I guess the oven and electrical. Replace the oven with, with an electric oven, and that saves a lot of effort. Then you're not dealing with gas and those issues and then what you, a lot of these boats have just ice chests and then some people convert them over into freezer refrigerators but again if you're converting a boat a cheaper boat like this I doubt it's a refrigerator it's probably just an ice chest over here if you're going to be putting in a new refrigerator freezer why not just start over and make your own so really what you have in here is just facing of the the room just like some plywood walls or whatever they're, they're made out of and some benches it's not very not very difficult so yeah that's why I don't want one of these cheapo boats I thought about it for a long time and, and maybe I will get one maybe as a starter boat because really if you're living on it you're reducing costs five thousand dollars and you pay a mortgage of four hundred dollars a month or something like that you're still saving a ton of money each month and it pays for itself in like half a year which is another reason that I want a boat but if I put that money into a steel boat with the fast track idea of using a tank car 
seems like you could get up and running in a somewhat condition in like a couple months maybe. Uh, then you also have extra cost with uh, painting the bottom of the boat with, of course, this one would need it also, but anti-fouling paint and the paint on, uh, under that, which apparently is a huge cost. And then you also have to drag out the boat from the water, which costs a couple thousand dollars. And the paint costs several thousand dollars. So the prices can add up fast for getting it uh, resistant to water. But, yeah, that's my thinking about it. And that's why I don't want one of these boats.